Hello and welcome. You're watching Tech24 on France 24. Coming up on this week's show. How real can fake get? We take a look at deep fake technology that uses AI to create super realistic fake videos and images. And in Test24, a crafty gadget for football junkies that keeps you abreast of the latest scores while attending business meetings. Thanks for watching. Now, as artificial intelligence gets more advanced, people are using the technology to manipulate videos. These clips, known as deep fakes, use face mapping to put words in the mouths of politicians or actors. For now, it's mostly being used for laughs, but there is a sinister side uh, to these videos which could be weaponized in misinformation wars. With the software evolving, it's getting harder to spot the real from the fakes. Ellen Gainsford has the story. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. He looks like Barack Obama and sounds like so, Barack Obama. Uh, for instance, they but he's not all he seems. Like, it's a deep know. fake. Killmonger was right. A deep fake in a nutshell is a fake video. Um, it's a video that um, has been created by essentially feeding a computer algorithm. So for example, uh, President Obama, the, the program learns by watching these videos how to reproduce videos authors making. The software uses deep learning, a new kind of artificial intelligence that can teach itself skills. Someone like Jordan Peele. The technology allows an impersonator and a team of scientists to produce an eerily lifelike video. Forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. Some examples don't try to hide their fakery, like in this clip where Donald Trump's face is imposed on Richard Nixon's. Unanimously urged me to do so. For the moment, they're mostly made for comedy value. But in the US, security experts and politicians are taking the technology seriously. They believe it could be a threat to national security. It takes some real forensic uh, capability, technical capabilities, to be able to show that it's not real. And by the time that's done, it's been widely disseminated. But we know there are people out there that are trying to divide society, influence elections, and we know this capacity exists. So it's only logical that at some point someone's going to take the next step and sort of weaponize it. After the fight against fake news, the next battle is against deep fakes. Some platforms, including Twitter and Reddit, have already banned the videos. That's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. OK, now for more on the ethical questions related to deep fake technology, we're joined by Professor Luciano Floridi. He's director of the Digital Ethics Lab of the Oxford Internet Institute. Professor, Professor Floridi, thank you for uh, talking to us on Tech24. Um, this is quite concerning, isn't it? I mean, the, the, the line between what's real and what's fake online is getting more and more blurred, right? It is concerning very much. Uh, we also need to remember that authenticity uh, from uh, the best painting to uh, a document to uh, a check, even banknotes, uh, has always been a problem. Uh, now it is a bit of an extra headache uh, because it involves politics and therefore power. It's one thing to get uh, a fake banknote or a fake check or uh, discovering that a museum has bought the wrong Rembrandt. And another thing is to hear the President of the United States saying things that uh, might be insane or incredibly dangerous. So it is a big concern and uh, there are solutions that I hope will be put in place. Now, we've seen the political uh, ramifications uh, in that report, but there are other concerns, for example, depicting people in compromising situations. Actors have been depicted in porn videos in which they never appeared. There are really uh, many ethical questions, right? That's correct. And uh, we might simplify by dividing them into two groups. On the one hand, almost everybody now can uh, be subject to deepfake. The trouble is that the technology is very uh, simple at this stage uh, to use. Um, it's very powerful and uh, it feeds on all the online material that we put there. So that's one problem uh, or a big problem on one side. On the other side is also our certainty. Do we really know what we're watching is real? Uh, can I trust this particular source? Is that really the President of the United States saying what he's saying? So the twofold problem here uh, generates uh, an unprecedented headache for ethics. Right, so we've we gone beyond the, the simple factor of, say, counterfeits when it comes to paintings or whatnot. This is a whole new level of depth of manipulation, right? Uh, with, uh, with, with our whole basis of how we understand reality, what reality is being 
shaken. Indeed, uh, trust is based on authenticity. I trust some kind of food, I trust a friend, I trust the news, uh, I trust what I watch, because I think it's the authentic thing. It's, it, it is what it says it is. Now that I have uh, deep fake, uh, I start having doubts about what am I actually consuming. Now, this means that uh, the problem is politically uh, more dangerous than just uh, getting a fake check or having a, a fake Rembrandt in a, a museum, because we're talking about politics and therefore power, and power can have huge, significant implications if it is mishandled. Professor Floridi, what are the means of combating this phenomenon? Normally, there are three uh, possibilities here. One uh, is um, the, a classic uh, legislation. Uh, the discussion is already ongoing, for example, in the UK, to make deepfake a crime. Now, that will make people think twice before playing uh, lightly with this kind of technology. The second one is uh, education. Uh, if you get a big banknote, very new, flesh, uh, normally uh, you are a bit careful. Well, we should be also developing some uh, critical understanding of what we're watching all the time. And the third one is technological. Uh, watermarks are uh, making all this material a little bit more difficult, uh, perhaps banning some uh, uh, extreme uh, tools. Uh, that is something that is also possible. But I have to say, the genie is out of the lamp now. All right, Professor Floridi, uh, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much uh, for those insights into the uh, murky field of deepfake. Now, to move on to our next uh, topic, it's soon in Paris, a new mathematics museum it will open. Uh, it's called the Maison des Mathématiques. It will welcome visitors from early 2020. One of its aims is to bring maths closer to the general public. Now, the new museum is affiliated to the Henri Poincaré Institute. Uh, he was one of the fathers of uh, mathematics in France, uh, Dan and Jay, and he kind of simplified mathematics for the general public, That's which is right. what this museum wants to do as well, right? Absolutely. But not only that, he was also instrumental in introducing many new concepts, like the concept of topology. Now, topology is a kind of geometry that deals with relations or interactions between objects, bodies, or parts. He's, his work, rather, also uh, led to the foundation of chaos theory. I'm sure you must have mm -hmm. heard about the it's butterfly. The, but the butterfly effect. Absolutely. It's like I'm creating chaos in, in five years somewhere else. <laughs> Hopefully <right>? not. <laughs> so yeah, his work on the so-called three-body problem, which involves the gravitational interaction of three celestial bodies, resulted in uh, the foundation of uh, chaos theory. He realized that any small change in initial conditions results in vast difference in the final outcome. So that's where... Uh, that was a stepping stone for the uh, chaos theory. Then he also made significant contributions to theoretical physics, whether it is relativity, whether it is thermodynamics, mm. fluid dynamics, and celestial mechanics. And yeah. So basically, a total genius as who kind of translated the language of the universe, mathematics, and that's what we can expect to learn more about in this museum. Absolutely, and not, and not to forget, he also proposed this so-called uh, uh, Poincaré conjecture, mm. which remained unsolved for almost a century before it was cracked in 2002 by a Russian mathematician, Grigory Perman. And then, interestingly, uh, this Russian mathematician refused all the rewards, like a $1 million prize, and even the Fields Medal that came. Okay, so learning more about Poincaré and uh, other mathematicians uh, making math simple at the Maison de Mathematiques in 2020, opening here in Paris. Now it's time for Test 24 on France 24. Okay, so we are taking a look, Dan and Jay, at a pen. It looks like a cigar there, or an electric cigarette. Uh, but this is actually some sort of a radio device that you can listen, where you can listen in on football or whatever else. Uh, right now I'm listening to the analysis of uh, today's matches. Okay, all right, so World by Cup, just, World yeah, Cup exactly. fever. By just placing <laughs> by biting this on pen. the pen. Yeah, by biting on the pen. Okay, so explain to us how that works. Well, this works uh, by using the bone conduction technology. Normally, uh, sound waves, they travel in the air, then they reach our outer ear, then they reach the eardrums, and then the eardrums vibrate, and that is converted into a signal that is then sent to the inner ear. Mm -hmm. But in case of so, bone so conduction... They're marketing effect, it all around the World Cup, right, and, and football, but it's really just a, a device. Any, yeah, any, you can listen to any radio station. Right. Uh, so in this case, the bone conduction technology, so it essentially sends the sound waves through your bones. So here, yes. as I bite on it, yes. the sound is sent through yes. the bones directly to my inner, inner ear. So it skips all this, uh, the outer ear, the eardrum. So that's how you, you are able to listen to the sound. And it's very personal. So as I 
as Listen you bite on it. We you can don't, see here, like, you, that this is what you're doing. Somebody can be in a meeting. I don't hear what you hear, right? Absolutely, yeah. You cannot hear what I'm hearing. And it has important applications as well. Look, it, it's a, basically, it uses the jawbone, yeah. from what I understand. And those, it's transmitted through the bones to the inner ear. So you can use it through an application which uh, comes with the pen. It's made by the German company Radio.net. So the application is essentially uh, an internet radio, so you can listen to multiple radio stations. And interestingly, the bone conduction technology has other applications as well. So for example, if you have hearing problems because of damage to eardrums, right. you can use this bone technology, all right. bone it's, it's conduction technology. It's all very James Bond. I'll, I'll swap you my purple useless <laughs> pen for, for, the, for that. Okay, thanks, Don and Jay. Thanks for that, and thanks for watching uh, Tech24 on France24.